Welcome to the introduction for reverse phase high pressure liquid chromatography. This is your cartridge for your chromatography today. It's packed with tiny little silica beads. They're really silicon dioxide. And that silicon dioxide uh, is, is glass. And the glass is coated with an 18 carbon chain. We're calling it C18, and it makes the glass beads nonpolar. So the mobile phase that goes through this cartridge should separate based on polarity. Because the stationary phase inside of the cartridge is nonpolar, then we should see nonpolar things move more slowly. And polar things move more quickly. Let me show you how to load this sample. If your cartridge looks clean, you can assume that the class before you cleaned it. So you don't have to follow through with the preparation step. The preparation step involves using 70% isopropyl alcohol to flush this thing through until all of the color is out of it. And uh, so you're, you will do that at the end of the lab today so that next period's car uh, cartridge is all good to go. The three milliliter syringe is for your Kool-Aid. So you can take, you're only going to put one milliliter into your cartridge. So you can take your syringe and your Kool-Aid and load just over a milliliter of the Kool-Aid into your syringe. To load your sample, you want to take your syringe, insert it into the long end of your cartridge, and you want to keep an eyeball on the level change of your plunger. So the plunger, when you are loading your sample in, should move one milliliter. And let's see if I can make that work. Okay. So there's one milliliter that I put in to the cartridge. Now disconnect your syringe and put the remaining Kool-Aid back in your Kool-Aid reservoir. Now you have a pump. This syringe becomes a pump to load your sample the rest of the way into your column. And you're going to want another beaker because what we're going to see pushed through here is effluent from the cleaning of your column. So I'll get another beaker. All right, I'm all set up. I've got air here in my pump, it's just air. And I want to make sure that I push my sample into the cartridge until the top level of the sample is flush with the cartridge. And it looks like it's settled on its own. And so you'd use your syringe as a pump to push your sample down, just with air, until the top level of your sample is flush with the top level of the silica in your cartridge. And you can probably see that we already have some dye separation here. The bottom of the cartridge is more red and the blue dye is moving more slowly. All of our syringes are color coded and I want you to uh, pay attention to the fact that I'm doing part one and I'm using the red syringe which is tied to the 18% isopropyl solution. That's your part one eluent. And you're asked to load your syringe with 10 milliliters of the 18% isopropyl which is going to be your eluent. 
I've got my 10 milliliters. Hook that back up to your cartridge. And you want a slow and steady flow rate. You can use your beaker again. And while you're pushing your eluent through your cartridge, you want to keep an eye on the color of your solution. And you want a starting volume. Oops. Actually, you're going to be using a graduated cylinder. You want a starting volume for when the first color starts coming through. You want a stopping volume for when there's a transition between that first color and second color. Uh, you want a starting volume for your second color and an ending volume for that second color. And it looks like from our column that it's going to be red and blue. So you're going to be keeping your eye on the volume down here really carefully and you're going to be depressing the plunger slowly and steadily. I think the rate is 5 to 10 milliliters per minute so this should take about a minute to two minutes to do. And record your volumes, record your observations, everything else is pretty straightforward. What I do want to point out is that all your cartridge waste should go here for part one, all your cartridge cleaning waste, please put it here in this waste bin. But when you move on to part two, we want to save your effluent because I want to dry it. I want to evaporate the, um, the solvent, which is our eluent. And I want to look at what remains are there going to be oils or dyes or salts? Uh, and we'll look at those as uh, part of this lab the next day that we're in class. All right.